<laughs> Cheers, and welcome to the Nook on the Voluntary Virtues Network. <coughs> I'm Steve, and I'm here today with Kev G. Hey, I can't see the camera. <laughs> it's it's there somewhere. like, yeah, <laughs> close enough. There's no camera, we're just talking <laughs> to right, we're, we're just yeah, having a conversation. Fine. Cameras aren't it's a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually fairies that are broadcasting things to like, YouTube. Yeah, right? Yeah. That sounds accurate. Yeah, fairies. Fairy. Fairies. <laughs> fairies. Everybody with me? Fairies. Got it. Yeah. All right. Tube fairies. <laughs> Tube <laughs> fairies. <laughs> Reverend Pastor. <laughs> John. Christy. Very Christy. And Matt. <laughs> so, uh, you're going to start, I think, with ye Mike's ye old beer corner. Ale, ale, ale corner. Ale corner. Uh, this is actually um, a good one. Uh, we we'll find out. Matt passed this along to me. It's uh, from uh, Sudwork Brewing Company. It's called Farmer's Market, Market Citrus Ghost Lo Lager. So, it's it, not an ale. It is not ale. It's not even a beer. It's a ghost. <laughs> it's, a, it's a ghost. <laughs> ghost. Um, kind of tastes like grapefruit. And Maybe for beer, it's grapefruit. actually pretty That's good. Kind of I normally don't like grapefruit, but in mixing it with beer here, I'm kind of enjoying it, actually. What yeah. about grapefruit sculpin? Uh, you know what? Kind of included. Yeah, I don't normally, uh, you know, grapefruit and beer. Learning all kinds of things about you, Mike. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm full of surprises. Are we going to have a story night? Oh, my God. <laughs> Just got to get you a little bit more drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A yeah. about... couple, couple more shades in and, yeah, <laughs> stories. So, I thought we'd start, we'd do tonight a question and answer from... You know, status position, what kind of questions that they normally bring up, and we'll give quick and hopefully quick and easy answers to these difficult questions. Something that you might come up with in a social setting of some sort. But, Steve, what if we can't answer the question in a 20 second sound bit? <laughs> well, the 20 answer seconds is pretty tight. Yeah. <laughs> We need the government this to answer questions. This isn't, yeah. this isn't a minarchist versus anarchist debate. Right. Well, there's, <laughs> yeah, there's that. There's uh, what CNN does it like that sort of shit, too, right? But worse, like, yeah, here's your 30 seconds to tell the entirety of your situation. Thanks. So, what is libertarian in 10 seconds or less? Go. Time. <laughs> that actually is an important piece of it because uh, in conversations, just in general, these in this these days it's like little quips little thing everybody wants a very complicated topic to be discussed in one sentence and you can't do that it's a conversation it's you know it's maybe a half hour conversation or an hour conversation or maybe weeks and it's it's sometimes it's not a just a one one off well look at look at when they're being serious right when are they being serious presidential debates and they get up there with their sophistry and that's really what it is, and, too. And, yeah, and and it's this soundbite nation. Yeah, you know? it it's is. not just this nation, it's probably global, but uh, yeah. Even when the, uh, the majority of people are being serious and, oh, it's time to watch the presidential debates, they're still dealing with soundbites. Yeah. And then they go and watch the after show with the news and they double down with the soundbites. You, know? you can't always do it for the vine, you know. With a vine. Vine, vine videos what? are what? short videos. Uh, Thank you, Matt. Uh, Thank like you. So somebody, yeah, all right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, vines are short videos, less than 20 seconds, right? And, uh, I don't know exactly the length. It's honestly. something yeah. like, yeah. No, that's a good question, though, because not everybody... Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. ...who may be listening in on our conversation might not know what that is. Yeah. But listening in conversation does not necessarily imply a camera. It's the flowers by a rain van out front. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, anyway, so, uh, good question, and Christy. The, and the feds that show up at our meetings sometimes? Yeah, occasionally, from time to time. <laughs> we know who you are. Yes. <laughs> we know. We know. We know and we laugh behind That's your right. back. <laughs> Snicker, as, <laughs> Snicker as you walk outside the door. As so, a fact. we have a question from the audience. Oh, huh. yes. Okay. Yes, um, I was wondering, uh, who's going to protect us from the terrorists? Like, what about national defense? <laughs> it's a very good question, random person who's <laughs> at our, at our discussion. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> 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 
those fed, those feds come in all shapes and sizes. And yeah, if, if you could please, and if, if you could please rearrange your head scarf a little bit tighter, you might. Yeah. <laughs> no, these are not the answers to the question. Right. But so, for national defense, I think first of all you have to look at what are you defending yourself against. Defense in the regular budget anyways is the number one uh, the number one expenditure. What, expenditure, thank you. In the budget. But what is most of that money spent on? Is it spent on defense or is it spent on aggression against brown people overseas? Yeah. Uh, but absolutely there's going to become times where you're going to need to defend yourself against others. Um, so what is the voluntarist solution to that? It's so let's say there's no, I'm just, I'm just let's say there's no, because that's what the, the people come up with all the time is, there, in your world, there's no national defense anymore. Um, let's say another uh, country comes over and takes us over. How do we defend or ourselves? attempts to take us attempts over? Attempts to take us over, yes. So what well, attempts, yeah. First thing, and it's not ideal, but there's never been a successful war against a Armed, defen yeah. defensive guerrilla, yeah. against defensive guerrilla tactics. And, uh, and I brought that up, and I said, well, they never, we are the most armed uh, civilian population ever, you know, and they're like, Accurate, and then yeah. their next qu next statement is, well, what about, you know, tanks and air, you know, if we wouldn't have air forces and all that, you know, is that... The other, the other, the other issue I want, I want to bring up too is that with, in, in defense, what is a nation doing when it attacks another nation? It's, it, when it attacks another nation, it and wins, you know, take takes over, occupies. They just take over the. What they do is they take over the existing infrastructure of government of government so and if there's no tax government, base. yeah, right, inherit the right, tax base, right. But you don't have that right. in an anarchist society, voluntary society. I think anarchist is too vague. But yeah. in a voluntary society, you don't have that infrastructure of uh, power base to take over. And so, so essentially, it turns into a either you have to eliminate every person in the geographical area, or you know you have to create from scratch all these institutions and and infrastructure of dominance and control. Being the general premise we're coming from is that we're talking about a society without government. So, right, you know right. what I'm saying? So like, yeah. okay, yeah. So if there is, if there is no government and, and we're invaded and they try, well, so, you know, an invading army is going to look for the hierarchical structure because that's exactly. what they're right, dealing with. Right. They're like, yeah. well, they've got right. their general telling them right. to do that. So and they then, take then that over. You need intelligence. Yeah. Right. You, you have to figure out what you're attacking, what your strategy is. Yeah. If, if you have millions of people you need to do that for because you have a million different defenses, yeah. you, you're going to be like, holy shit, what so, am I going to do here? So this kind of speaks to why another nation wouldn't want to do it, right? Risk analysis, if you will. Uh, to speak as to actual active measures, uh, a voluntarist society, if you will, could take with there's they could read up on mutual defense, mutualism, mutual aid, and uh, another uh, well developed idea is having uh, private armies. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, sure, and there's financial instruments you can use to tie down uh, a private army to ensure that it doesn't become the next dictator. You can make them uh, yeah, instruments like the Better Business Bureau or AAA would come around, they'd audit the, the inventory of the, the private contractor and uh, if they're found in violation of their allowable inventory then 
you know, they could default on X amount of billion dollars in some accessible bank that account. That people put into it voluntarily. Their, well, their right, wealth, right? Their voluntary um, More than plot, that, right? aggression costs money. Right. War costs money. Yeah. And when you use things like inflation and right. hidden hidden fees and taxes and that kind of thing. Central banks. Central <laughs> banks, yeah. yeah. Well, it's in their best interest. You can to hide yeah. the cost the of cost it. of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. In addition yeah. to that, when you're taxing people, yeah. versus uh, having a base of customers, you can take those tax dollars and do what you want with them. And just tax more if you're going to start a war. But you can't just charge people more money to attack people who haven't harmed them right. and not expect them to bail on your your firm for in favor of another more peaceful firm. And it, and it, sh- it should be mentioned that, you know, when it, when it comes to, I, I think, like control, and then, then we'll probably, you know, maybe get to another question, I guess. Maybe or Kevin, maybe Kevin's got something additional to it, but um, you know, they it to me like it shows that this is that wars are so much more about control because I mean nine times out of ten, if not a higher you know uh, ratio than that of like nineteen out of twenty or something like that, wars are not profitable. You know, even for the you know the people who started, even with the invading not, army, even for the people who oh, are the, embedded in it. No, oh, even you know, the people who on. like start the war, it's usually not profitable for them. What you about know? the companies? That like, oh yeah, the they, know, they, they make out well, but yeah. the actual but the actual government themselves nowadays does not, and hasn't been that way for thousands of years, really. Like it, it they it it costs more to. I mean, I'm I'm thinking of like an example right. of like. Um, Vespasian going into Israel and taking all the gold out of the Holy Temple and bringing it back to Rome, even then it was still, you know, that was like one of the very few examples of, hey, this actually came out, you know, in the green for us. Almost all the time, like, wars are running in the red. They're usually, it's usually to fund their more control, though, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's not it's not about getting money, you know, I mean, because yeah, sometimes people say, like, oh, it's about, it's about control. Yeah. Chapter 3 of 1984. Wars are not meant to be won. They're meant to destroy mm. the produce of the productive, or the, the produce of the productive, right? Yeah, anyway. I don't know, so that, that just leads came me up. to my question. Question? So I know that one question that's brought up quite often amongst discussion in the voluntary society is folks who commit acts of violence, specifically murder within the group, or um, pedophiles. How do you deal with them? How do you maintain control without putting somebody in a cage and allowing them to act out again? How do you keep your community safe but not put people in cages, I guess, is the question. Well, That's always a good question. question. I always want to know what the solution is within a volunteer society. The answer always is we're looking for a voluntary solution. And uh, so how would we handle something like that? And you'd have uh, private courts uh, and the main objective would be to, for proper restitution for the offended parties. And as far as quarantining the the violators, if you will, uh, we would want to make um, a private corrections system whereby it's the best option for uh, the people to voluntarily uh, uh, they would choose that it was a better yeah I'm thinking of the I word from World War II camps the the Japanese (laughs) voluntarily intern themselves right yeah so (laughs) Right, so but who supports them? Who feeds them? Who houses them? Who takes care of them? Their own pro- their they're, own? they're working in it, right? So it's uh, with the community they're allowed to work. Well, independently. They're allowed. Isolated? Well, it's a, it, it would be from from my understanding is it would be a, an alternative to complete ostracism. Ostracism, yeah, ostracism right? Yeah. So, so like a voluntary but form of so basically, you're allowed to yeah. interact <laughs> at a limited level. 
so long as you maintain yourself in this prison system. Right. So the, Bob Murphy has a book on this chaos theory, and he goes through a lot of details. I think uh, what you're all kind of getting at is um, if, let's say, you kill somebody and courts decide that you owe that family a million dollars, but you don't want to pay it because you're just, you know, outside the law or whatever. They're a scumbag, whatever. Honest. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> but uh, because this mark is on your, you know, identity, because most properties own, people aren't going to let you on their property, yeah. into their communities, into their malls. Um, so there would be a market of prisons where you would go to, and what's I, I think fascinating about this idea is that they would actually compete to be better for the prisoner. Hmm. Because the prisoner has a choice to say, I'll give you my $1 million of liability, I'll work for you, the prison makes profit off of that, but mm. actually can treat the wow, prisoner that's, well. That's a, and he works off his it. debt. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and with, like, I, I think, uh, you know, s certain crimes, like the, the two you mentioned, you know, uh, murder or, you know, uh, or, uh, rape. Uh, rape, child molestation, you know, the... These these things that that are you know universally in almost every culture not tolerated at all you know except for psychopaths except it's it's kind of value it, it, on it, what it, is worth as, as far as compensation for the violation or the well murder. see so that that's the thing is that? well I could could I I could say maybe this um, yeah. it would depend on the person they murdered and their value like what did they do for a living it could it could depend on that if they were some they high work well, they, they made more money than it, it, it would all be dependent on how much of the family they had to provide for how large the family they had to provide Dave, I think David no, Friedman let me sorry, I'm sorry okay. um, so David Friedman David Friedman has pointed out that these legal systems essentially stem from a feud system, which is actually different from feudal system, uh, but that's a different story. The feud system essentially is, you wronged me, so I'm going to get all my buddies together and we're going to attack you, and you're going to get all your buddies together and attack me. My hat fails. <laughs> for attacking, right. exactly. Yeah. But... It, the the theory behind it is that if if you rightfully or wrongfully injured me or you know kill say you killed my father um, my my friends are more likely to back me up than your friends are to back you up since you're the one that that this con hold on just a minute. Sorry, Steve's on I just roll. need to. I need Steve's to get this, this he's, idea. He's got to go. So, so what the idea is is that you pay me to not attack you, as essentially is what it, mm. you killed my father. So you're gonna pay me, so that I don't kill you in return. Is so essentially versus money. Life equals well, money. How? Yeah. Well, how does any of this really solve the problem that someone was murdered? And I don't I mean, think it, that's it, a it, problem it, that you can I'm solve. Well, exactly. you I would it? say it creates more accountability um, because now if someone, uh, you know, they can just go get locked up and sit there and get three hots in the cot, and that's that. But if you're if you actually have some skin in the game where you know your art your insurance from the everyone has an a, you know an insurance company that they insure themselves against crime and if if they commit a crime. Or, or, or you know, negligent by mistake, or who knows, some sort of accident. There, you know, th those those arbitrators would would uh, would decide, you know, who gets what money and who's at fault by their investigations. Uh, and, right? Yeah, exactly. Next so. question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what about the roads? Oh, oh, I'm, going, I'm going home. <laughs> See, if I drive from California to Connecticut, do I have to pay go through a thousand tolls? You because might. All independently you so might. This is a great, you no, might. great analogy of the yeah. internet here. Yes, yeah. exactly. The internet is a perfect analogy yeah. for the roads because. Uh, with the internet, it's actually a bunch of private right. uh, owners of yeah. you know routers and uh, connections. Mm -hmm. They all make mutual agreement to for people to travel along the roads, and then there's entry points. And mm -hmm. it's a 
it's a system of interconnecting tubes, right? <laughs> tube. Tube. So basically, we would be flying through tubes yes. instead of in cars. <laughs> right, yeah. All right, a good one for John. What about education for children? Who's going to pay for that? State education. Well, it would likely disintegrate. Disintegrate. I mean, <laughs> uh, hopefully, or ideally, I mean, I would see like the old model before the yeah. education system. You have neighborhood schools, so yep. maybe you had, you know. Uh, the way the way counties are today or you know you could have 10 15 20 30 schools in a zip code <laughs> you know what I mean it, it would be a, a you know, neighborhood school right you know yeah, yeah. where the so, young and old were all in one classroom right learning together teaching each other and for those who who, who choose not to use that model and they go to their there own, would be yeah. uh, private schools like there are now yeah. the charter school model but so totally do the private. rich neighborhoods so. have better schools than the poor neighborhoods? Possibly. Uh, well, I think well let, me, let me point something out real quick. Growing up, my parents weren't rich. They were lower middle class to poor uh, throughout the entire time I was growing up. I went to a private school for junior high and high school. And, and it wasn't because... Uh, my parents did sacrifice to send me to the school. But it was also uh, reasonably priced, and they had scholarships for kids' parents who couldn't pay to get into the school, which is an aberration in our current society. Most people, uh, uh, private schools don't cater to the poor and, and even middle class because they can just send them to private, their public, public school. school. And so there is no interest in sending to a private school. I won't say there's no interest, but most people... Motivation. There's no motivation. Right. The, the, the incentive structure isn't there. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. But if this incentive structure were removed, this public school system were removed, you would see a lot more of the schools catering to middle class and lower, lower class, um, uh, financial lower class uh, people. Right. I think an important thing is uh, when you're talking about all these problems, also, who's well, going to solve them. Right. You gotta, you gotta, anybody who's concerned about them should get together and talk about yeah. it. Right. Yeah. You, th this yeah. conversation yeah. could be had within your family, yes. within your yeah. friends, I think that's on the traditionally, internet. That's a lot so of, uh, traditionally, education was done by schooling, or, or by, I'm sorry, by churches. Supply. As well. Uh, the education of the special. poor and that yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> as well. So, sorry so, about that. That's the George Orwell special going over right now, apparently. Back yeah. to the roads. And my question is, like older folks in their 60s, 70s, I was at the DMV recently, and there was a gentleman there who was required to provide a vision test as well as take a road test because of his age to determine whether or not he was still eligible to hold the program. If I can't hear, you know, can't, I'll repeat yeah. the question. I'll repeat it. So elderly people who have to retake the, the, the driving test to see if they actually can drive? Right. Well, okay. He was not elderly. He was in his 60s. Oh, okay. When he was there. The DMP sent him to us and said, you need to come to the DMP, take a vision test and a driving test for us to determine your eligibility to remain a California driver's license. That's all. That's so a, how would you determine that in you, the you probably wouldn't. Uh, it would, there may be something that you have lower insurance rates if you pass yeah. this test. That would be a yeah. proactive way companies. to get people voluntarily go and, 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 and pr prove their own roadworthiness. On the other aspect of it, though, that's just uh, a regulatory racket, and it's an uh, example of pre-crime. You know, uh, you and, and, in a volunteer society that folks would be cognizant of their skills and their ability to drive and have the, I guess, if your insurance would, I should not be driving, and then we would be able to assist them, and then that would not be required. Where people now are going to sit back and your independence. Once you are are a driver and you're independent, and that's taken away from you, then you're you're more than likely to hold on to that and to make ex excuses for being able to drive. Right. So what I'm getting at is in a volunteer society, that need to be independent would be taken away because you would have people supporting you. You wouldn't need to hold on to that. 
to the fact that you want to drive? Right, that you okay. can't drive. You would have the courage to say, you know what, my vision's not so good. Right. Because you have the support within the society. Right. Good points. Yeah. Yeah. There's also it would be more of a more technologies available in a in a free market society and as well as I mean Uber there for example go. is Robot, a lot cheaper and a lot of elderly taxi. use it to get around yeah. autonomous uh, cars plug yeah. at some point. Yeah. What makes me laugh about the whole <laughs> roads thing is that um, imagine a business where forty thousand people a year died in that <laughs> sector. Mm -hmm. I mean. It's right. amazing that right. we accept the system as it is right. today. Right. It's, it's a terrible system. Yeah. And you, you could have, I mean, if you're talking about roads where there are competing markets, you could have uh, different setups, different uh, strategies working on different roads, right. um, basically different sets of enforcement, how they uh, enforce them. But, yeah, it, it definitely doesn't make sense the way we're doing it now. It's like, I mean, it would be clearly a competitive advantage if you could say, Less people die on my roads than, you know, my competitors' right. roads. Or right. I think there will be a transition between what is now and what will be. And I think that's what scares people is the transition period. They may be able to see some of this, but there's that transition. And not. And I think people are just going to have to yeah, be okay with it. The transition become slow yeah. and easy or hard and fast. Well, if we, if <laughs> we prepare in between, people right? and, like, let's start, you know, just be, we have to start... Yeah. Working together and, and coming Next, up with solutions. There really does need to be a mind yeah. switch, switch yeah. shift, yeah. paradigm sort of yeah. shift. Well, when you, yeah, yeah. You realize a revolution of mind. A cultural shift. When yeah. you realize you're, you're the best one to take care exactly. of your own affairs. Yeah. You, you shouldn't. They're not going to do it, guys. No one's going to do <laughs> it for <laughs> you. No one's gonna, and, and you yeah. have the most info. Yeah. yeah I have a question. So as far as volunteerism goes, how will you support the environment if you don't have any type of regulatory committees involved in telling us how to? I, I'd like to interject. I think a, a more important question than that is, what about robot sex? Nice environment. I mean, it, it, uh, what do these robots look like robot exactly? Sex and environmental. Yes, yeah, yeah. environmental. Sex and environment. I think that's robot. important. What, what if the robot <laughs> sex are putting out pollutants? Ooh. Well, that's kind of that's kind of a weird <laughs> concept, but you know, I mean, I, I guess if you want to have sex with a robot in the wilderness, sure, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, if that's kosher, right? I think so. <laughs> A lot of sparks causing fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that's not a good idea, yeah, but you yeah. know. Yeah. Build in a fire extinguisher. Or <laughs> Built in fire extinguisher. <laughs> How? <laughs> Matt, you're on the Android project right there. <laughs> Don't Built sue me, Google. <laughs> Built in si fire suppression system. <laughs> Shit can get hot. <laughs> <laughs> it might get hot. Oh. Quote oh. of the night. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> have a good night, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Fair enough. See you at Jackalope. <laughs> <laughs>